Hello, my name is Megan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm really glad that you're watching this. All right, so today's video is on my etiology of my cervical instability. So where my cervical inst instability began um, and a brief backstory and just medical history. I've gotten a decent amount of questions on how I acquired instability and um, just things relating to my medical history. So I'm just going to give a brief backstory, like I said. And if you have any specific questions, feel free to ask me because this will not be the full story. Um, I can't get through it all in a short clip. And so um, this is what, this is just a basis for um, the backstory. All right, so first and foremost, I've had symptoms since middle school. Um, and the primary symptoms I had were just really heavy fatigue, POTS related symptoms. Um, I wasn't diagnosed with POTS at this time, but dizziness, extreme difficulty regulating temperature and things of that nature. I won't get into all of the symptoms, but things that coincided with those, that condition and um, related symptoms. And all the way through middle school, um, my family and I didn't know where my symptoms were stemming from and neither did my doctors either. I would go and inquire about these symptoms, but there was never any clear reason um, or explanation why um, I was experiencing these bizarre symptoms. And just so you guys know, I'm in my early 20s now, so it's been a while. It's been just short of 10 years that I've had um, cervical instability and POTS related symptoms. For me, especially early on, um, the symptoms were always decently manageable. They were difficult and made my quality of life not as great, but I could get through life with them and still partake in school and sports um, with everything going on. Looking back, it definitely could have been the instability that was creating all of these symptoms. Um, I had pretty bad concussions in middle school. My first concussion that I can remember was doing a somersault and in the process jarring my head and my neck into the ground. And then I've had successive head traumas and concussions throughout middle school and high school, I've always been an athlete and have really pounded on my body. So I'm sure that added to the instability potentially. Um, in another instance in high school, I was sparring. I used to do a little bit of training for boxing and um, I was hit, punched straight in the face and my head whipped back, very similar to whiplash. Um, and so I share these stories to say, basically that I've had head traumas and whiplash situations on multiple in, um, occasions and whiplash is known to cause instability and ligament damage. Um, all right, so throughout high school, um, things just progressively started to continue to get worse for me. It would fluctuate. Some seasons of life would be more bearable than others. Um, but the um, trajectory for me was always worse. I, in my sophomore year of high school, I started running cross country and um, started to experience numbness and tingling in my face and in my tongue, even more intense fatigue, blurred vision, dizziness. This is when I started to slur my words um, amongst other several things. And so my symptoms were just becoming more severe during that time, my body was just so compromised. I randomly broke out in about 20 warts on the bottom of my foot. I looked down at my foot one day and it was just covered in warts and we had no idea why. I'd never had a wart before. Um, I fractured both of my feet running that season. Um, I had ended up in the hospital multiple times because of my dizziness and slurred speech and I was so out of it that my parents were concerned. So they brought me to the emergency room um, we realized I had low serum ferritin levels, um, at least low for a female and for a runner. And so we just chalked it all up to, it must be some sort of iron deficiency. Um, all of my symptoms, because there was no other plausible explanation at the time, 
all of the testing and the imaging I had gotten done seemed borderline or not concern, extremely concerning. So I continued to just go on um, with life and slowly things became a little bit worse, but I was still able to do school throughout high school and sports and all things of that nature. During this time, I'd also had a couple tick bites, so we thought maybe I had Lyme disease, um, but all the CDC approved Lyme tests told me they were negative. And then what I really wanna share and where I think my instability became severe is August 20, 2019. I is kind of when everything became um, life altering for me is the best way to describe it. I was in a double impact car accident. I was driving one day and through an, to work through an intersection and on my way to work through an intersection and someone ran a, a light into oncoming traffic and they hit the, um, the door right behind me in my car and my car spun a couple times. It hit a fire hydrant. I, the fire hydrant um, like completely was dismantled um, and I ended up on the sidewalk and at the time my doctors just told me I had whiplash and sent me on my way. Two months later I had to drop out of college because my symptoms became so severe. Um, I couldn't see words on the board, I, my brain couldn't process them and this was extremely unusual for me. I remember looking at words and knowing that they were there but they wouldn't process and then sometimes they would just be completely blurred. Um, I was starting to have intense muscle spasms and muscle twitches and um, just bodily twitches, extreme overstimulation and heightened nervous system. I could barely make it to class because I was so severely fatigued amongst several other symptoms. Um, my, like I've said so many times, and I'm sure if you're in a similar boat, you can relate. The symptoms list is long, and so I, I just never go through all of it, but that is some of what was going on. And so I had to go home. Um, I knew I wasn't gonna, going to be able to stay through college. Um, and for almost the past two years, it's been, my life's looked like a lot of medical testing, a lot of doctors, a lot of imaging, um, a lot of specialists and trying to figure out what's wrong with me. The diagnostic process has been difficult. Um, difficult, honestly, is an understatement. It's been just, uh, I, I, it's just been so hard and I'm sure many people can relate. Um, there's just not been a lot of information and direction um, for my family and I. But luckily in fall of 2020, I started to get really bad. That's not the lucky part, but I started to get really bad in fall 2020. And um, through so much research, my family finally found a specialist who directed me to the possibility of cervical instability that would only show up on a digital motion x-ray. And so um, I was diagnosed with that and found the most relief from all of my symptoms that I've found on my journey thus far. Um, and so there, there are several other things that I've, in diagnoses I've had along the way. Um, it's not, this isn't my whole medical history or my whole backstory, but um, I share the etiology of the cervical instability because that's what's provided me with the most relief. And um, like I've said before, the manual traction, the bracing, and now the prolotherapy. Um, and so in short, the etiology of my cervical instability is from whiplash and head traumas and that has created ligament damage and um, the hope is that with it will just be continued healing and continued improvement of quality of life as it is treated. Like I've said before, if you have any questions, email me, comment below. I'm happy to answer or help out in any way that I can because I know that this journey, if you're in a similar situation, is not easy. All right, I hope that you guys are well and, ah, and I will upload another video soon.